Okay, so in this third video then, I'm going to take a look again at the normal distribution. And uh, we've explored a little bit the density function and features or properties of the normal distribution in Excel. I'm going to take um, some code here from, i leave the link here to the, i leave a hyperlink uh, with this uh, portal address. Uh, but I'm going to copy this code here into R. And I might just note also that I took the code, importantly, from um, Introduction to Econometrics with R. And I will also leave the link in the description below. So um, I'm going to go into R and I'll paste uh, the code directly in. And then I'm just going to run the code and the idea here is I just explore a little bit some of the qualities of the normal distribution. Um, and part of the discussion that we had related to, if we go back, uh, related to in Excel, this notion of the probability density function and then also the cumulative normal probability. And that how it builds towards one that the total area under the normal the bell shaped curve was one or a hundred percent and you know as we you know move more and more standard deviations away from the mean we approach one in terms of the area of the curve and if i mean if we stand here at the exactly the mean value of the population the area under the curve going back would be equal to 0 0.5 the more positive we are away from the mean the greater the area on the curve and that's also what's borne out here now we're going to, do, to set that up in the in r and again we could think of rolling the dice and we might think uh you know discriminate between the probability of an event and the cum cumulative probability so the probability density function and then the cumulative density. And we might replicate the actions if we roll the dice six times and each time recorded, you know, one over six uh, probability of an outcome. We could generate that here in R just by using this replicate probability and making it six events. And you can see it appearing here. Now, what all that basically is, is that if I roll the dice six times, the probability of each event would be one over six. So if I run probability, you can see I get one over six, one over six, one over six, and so on six times. So that's what we have, if you like, here, the one over six probability of each event. And then if I was to, to graph that, going to plot probability on the main with the probability distribution and then on the <coughs> x label on the horizontal axis the label is outcomes okay now if we want to then get the cumulative probability we're striving toward in this direction so let's just create that com sum probability so that means add each probability event to the next one and then let's plot that and you can see 1 over 6 and then at 1 over 6 all the way up to until we get to the sixth event and we have 1 right so when we add each of these outcomes then it accumulates up to eventually 1 and that's something that we observed also with the normal distribution now uh, to get the mean if I said let's take six values 1 2 3 4 5 6 get the mean it's just one colon six take the mean of that and that's 3.5 right and i could say okay so that's the mean what if i sampled out of the distribution and let's sample from a population of one to six and do three times and yes we do replace um, and again keep in mind here that uh, we're replicating we're replicating rolling a dice three times in a row. So if we do that and sample it, when we get we get one five five, 
Now it's important, if I set seed equal to 2, that means, I mean, this is a random type uh, process, but when I set the seed, it means I can replicate. So it's for re reproducibility. We can set a seed. We could set a seed 1 or 2 or 10,000. Um, let's set seed 2 and run that again. And we get 254. If I set seed 2 again and run that again, 254. If I set seed 2, run that sample sold 254. But if I sample without setting the seed, I got 266. And go again. And you can see now it's it's random. Okay, so the idea of setting the seed is that you can reproduce uh, what we... We can reproduce the pseudo-random events created by the by R itself. Okay. Uh, this time I'm going to set seed equal to 1. Okay, so that means we can reproduce what happens. We're going to take the mean of a sample. So we're going to sample the population is 1 to 6. And we're going to sample that 10,000 times. That seems a lot. And yes, we're going to replace. And we get a value of 3.5 which is not the same as the mean of 1 to 6, but it's very close. Okay. And then when we get the variation here, the variance, it's 3.5 of that. Try that again. Uh, 3.5 set seed equal to 1 and do it. 3.59 set seed equal to 1. Run that mean. 3.5039 and then the variance is 3.5 okay now let's develop these ideas of probability uh, and distinguish between the probability of a given event or the cumulative probability so I want to draw now the n01 so that's like nonce dist and I'm going to take the range of values from negative 3.5 up to 3. So that, that's the standard variance, standard deviates, right? So we're going to have a mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, and then we're going to do denorm, which is the density, right? Not the probability, but the density function. And we're going to go 3, negative 3.5 all the way to 3.5. Okay, so let's just look at that. So draw the curve. Go from negative 3.5 all the way to 3.5. I'm not sure what the step size are here, but it looks fairly continuous, so it must be a relatively small step size. And interestingly, we can generate the density function, standard normal density function. Okay. And if we wanted to see what the height here of the density function was at 1.96 standard deviation, so that's about here. And then at zero, that's about here. And then positive 1.9 standard deviation, that's about here. So we're looking, it should be less than one, right, in each instance. Less than 0.1, has to be less than 0.1. We get 0 0.05844. In the middle, it's 0 0.39. 0 0.39, looks about right. This 196, 1.96, is less than 0.1. 0.58 and then 0.58 replicated so again we have some preliminary evidence at least from this that the normal that the normal distribution is indeed bell shaped and symmetric okay so that's what that offers okay now I want to, s to plot the standard normal cumul cumulative density function and I want to get the probabilities accumulated. So again, it's a little bit like what we had here and what we saw in Excel. I want to build up this picture. Okay, so we come back again and we range in values from negative 3.5 to 3.5. 3.5. These are standard deviations, if you like, or standard deviates, standard normal deviates, right? And let's run. And we're getting the P norm, which is the cumulative 
probability. And again, that's very close to what we had observed here before. But in this instance, our standard deviation was was 10 as opposed to 1. Okay, but if we could imagine that the standard deviation was 1, then we divide by each of this by 10. Yeah, going from 3 all the way below 3, it's obviously 0. Above 3, we're very close to to 1. Very close to 1. And that's what we observe in our in this estimation here. Last thing, but kind of important to signal. Uh, if I was to get the P norm, so the probability at negative 196, okay, and uh, multiplied by 2, so that's kind of the probability in the tail. What's the area under the curve? 1.9, so if I go 1.9 standard deviations, it's about here back, okay, and multiply that by 2, so if we come back here for a second, so it's like if I take the area under the curve, going from by 1.96 back, that must be the same as over this side, and if I take this side and this side, so multiplying by 2, area under the curve going back from here, multiply it by 2, subtract 1, what's the area under the curve? We find it's about 95%. In other words, if I go 1.96 standard deviations away from the mean, right, so between here and here, with a normal Gaussian distribution, I have about 95% of the population. So one of the key points relating to the normal distribution is that within negative 1.96 and positive 1.96, I have 95% of the population. And that tends to suggest a lot of clustering here. This is like a kind of a tame or a wild, tame sort of a distribution. Okay. So uh, again, R is good at revealing that. And the source of this, I'm going to leave a hyperlink so that you can follow. It's in the, it'll be on the, uh, on the portal anyway. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there.